I believe it was a compact flash slot on it. That was a prototype decision. And we're in Firewire target disc mode. And it Yeah, I'm gonna have to acapella this. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because I just got a new computer in my collection. The G5 product line from Apple has really been intriguing me recently. And I've never had a G5 in my collection, seriously. So just randomly one day I hit up eBay and I'm just like, I wonder how much they're going for. And I found one for 35 bucks. The person in the listing said, and they also said this in a written index card note, which I thought was really nice. If I can figure out what's wrong with it, let them know. Because they did say something was wrong with it, and that's probably why it was so cheap. However, the issue didn't seem very complicated. She said there was a blinking question mark. Well, that pretty much just means it can't find a startup disk. So it could be one of two things. One, the easy route is it just needs an operating system installed, and we can do that no problem. Or two, the hard drive is dead and we need to put a new hard drive in here. That will be the slightly more complicated route, but not too bad because these G5s were actually pretty easy to take apart compared to the later uh, chassis and everything. You could just unscrew a few screws and it basically just comes apart. So for the first time ever, I'm gonna turn on a G5 computer. I mean, I might've done it once before, maybe in high school, but other than that, that's it. Let's boot it up together, ready? That's right, the button's on this side, yeah. Not on that side like it was on the later models. It's on this side, yeah. Here we go. Got the light, got the bong. Okay, not sure if it's supposed to sound like that. It sounds a little eh, but I don't know if that's normal for these or not. Maybe the fan is a little wonky, but I'm not hearing any like hard drive clicking or anything. So maybe this isn't a hardware issue at all. We just need to get an operating system on here. So let's go to the boot picker and see if we can find something. Oh, there go the fans. Holy shit, dude. Calm down, boy. I just loaded the boot picker is all. Oh my gosh, this thing's gonna take off. I can feel a nice breeze from the exhaust vent. Holy crap. Yep, okay, so there's no operating system detected. I'm going to find a disc we can use. Be back in a sack. All right, so this computer originally shipped with 10.3 Panther, but my Panther discs got warped in shipping. So I've held on to them, but yeah, they actually don't do shit. So we'll have to switch to a backup. I have an Intel copy, but uh, that's not gonna work on here. So this is my uh, high quality power PC copy. Yeah, well, it should work. Let's put Tiger on here, version 10.4 for the power PC. Give it a good old refresh. This thing sounds like a vacuum cleaner in the distance. Holy moly. Ah, breezy, yeah. Now right, let's try refreshing again. Okay, it's not detecting the disc. Hmm. That makes me feel good. Power down. Let's try this a different way. Hold down the C key. Gotta love the sound of optical drives. Shit, are you serious? Huh. Weird. I mean, this thing should be able to run Tiger no problem. Okay, so it sounds like it's trying to do something, but then just kind of gives up. Okay, well, let's uh, try something different. Let's first get this ejected, though. Well, I thought if you hold down the mouse button, it ejects. Was that just a, a fairy tale? Okay, it's not letting me eject the CD. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Good, good, great. I think there's a way we can bypass that. Let's boot into open firmware quick and just run an eject command. Beep. 
There you go. And fans are gonna blast off. Welcome to Open Firmware. At least it's got today's date and time. At least, no, it's, a, it's in the future by a little bit. Okay, so I just double checked the procedure on the Google machine and it told me to do exactly what I just did. So, that concerns me. Huh, I gotta say, I don't think I've ever had a funkier moiré pattern on a screen before. Something must be different with this. That's maybe just a lot of pixels packed together. That's, that's weird. Okay, well, any who's all, uh, let's figure out how to eject this stupid CD. Yeah, nothing I press is letting me eject the stupid CD. <laughs> that's just great. We've hardly even started. And we're already stuck. Like, freaking literally stuck. Right. And I don't think there's a manual eject hole you can just stick a pin into, so... I don't know, maybe the boys at Mackiac know. They can help me out. Uh, the other option is, with one of the USB ports on the back, I can just image a, an installer to like a flash drive and boot off of that, perhaps? I've done that before with Intel systems. Just. Get. Out. Of. The. Disk. Drive. You. Asshole. Also, Greg from Ruck Game Mods did warn me that the capacitors on these boards have issues. I haven't opened this thing up yet to check, but I wonder if something on the inside did like rupture and it's causing communication problems and shit. I don't really wanna to have to open it yet though until I absolutely have to. Although it would be cool to see the inside. Okay, so Greg from Rutke Mods dropped some knowledge on my ass and here's what happened. Well, he helped me confirm one of my Ideas about, well, if Leopard's not gonna work, or, well, if Tiger wasn't gonna work through optical media, which probably also means Leopard's not gonna work through optical media, I could just make a USB flash drive. And he gave me some tips on how to do that. But, USB, a USB flash drive is gonna be a little bit slow, so the other recommendation was, use a Firewire drive. It's our old friend, the Flask drive. For those who have never seen the Flask drive, it's a drive that looks like a flask. Any hoozle, I tried. I tried using this flash drive and it, it just would not partition at all. But this thing is damaged. I did accidentally knock it off a desk once while it was being used and I feel bad. So it's probably corrupt on the physical level. So my new idea, this might be a little crazy, but that's what the show is about. My new idea is to use a spare partition inside this computer's hard drive, image an installer to that spare partition, throw the computer into target disk mode, and then connect this computer to the iMac G5 via Firewire, and basically just use this computer as an install medium. That is my crazy plan. It might just work. We just need to believe. All right, so let's boot it up. Yeah, this PowerBook has some has some daddy issues. I mean, just regular power issues. So let's just uh, power cycle you for a sec. There we go. Ah, look at that yellow backlight, isn't that nice? Okay, so I cannot for the life of me remember why I have two partitions on here. They both have leopard on them. If we can just split this partition, give it like 16 gigs, and this will be the installer. Mac OS Extended Journal, that should be fine for now. We're gonna be imaging to it, or restoring to it later. The whole thing is Apple Partition Map already, so that means we can use this shit to boot PowerPC. So let's partition that and see if it works. Oh, it went back to Leopard 2. I thought I named it Installer. Did I not click the magic button to keep the name in there? What happened? Cool, we're gonna be Gucci. Okay, there we are, Leopard 2. So now, Oh, anyone who has watched like any of the hundred past episodes knows that I never have any luck with Disk Utilities restoration function. So we're gonna see if it works. But I also think I missed some basic steps and the program just doesn't tell me what I did wrong. So it makes me feel stupid. But anyway, we're gonna try restoring this disk onto that installer. Okay, so I'm gonna go to restore. The source is Mac OS X DVD. Okay, to select a destination, drag it from the left. I would like to put it, no, not on Leopard. That would be stupid. 
like to put it on the installer and restore. Restoring will write all source volume data over the destination volume data with the same name and file location. All other data will be preserved on the destination volume. It will? I don't really want that. It will, that's interesting. Well, let's, let's just do a full blown erase and restore. Okay, how much do you want to bet it's gonna fail? Copying blocks, shit, this might actually work. No, 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 I know better. I'm not saying that too soon. Estimated time remaining, 33 minutes. Okay, well, maybe that's enough time to go on a stroll, even though I'm 10 stories underground, don't really have much of a place to go. Lunch? How about we get lunch? Yeah, I saw some crumbs in the corner earlier. Those look pretty good. Hold on tight, we'll, we'll be back in a GIF. Oh, 55 minutes now. Okay, make that two GIFs. Okay, we are done. It looks like it worked. All right, we're gonna shut, shut this guy down for now and boot it into target disk mode in a bit. Let's head over to the G5. All right, target disk mode time. I gotta say, this is one of my favorite integrated features between Apple products. Now my cable might not reach. Ah, it's a short ass cable. Good enough for government work. Let's boot this guy up, hold down T, and we're in Firewire target disk mode. And it, f <laughs> I saw like a red bar at the bottom. Was that like a battery indicator? I mean, I have the power plugged in. Come on, it should work, right? Doesn't wanna work. Okay, so the cool thing about target disk mode is we can go either way. So my backup plan now is to throw this guy into target disk mode, boot off the install DVD on here, and then just install externally because external installation support is built into the Mac OS X installer. So let's try that. To be honest, I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. This other idea, in theory, should have worked just fine, but of course, the frickin', there's no battery in there, so it thinks, oh, I gotta shut down or something. I could put a battery in there. It's not gonna be a functional battery, but it would still be a battery. Yeah, there's not even a battery in there. Why is it showing a low battery symbol? There's no battery even in there. I, I, I'm so confused. Anyway. This guy's in target disk mode now. We're in full fan blast mode. But yeah, we really don't need this anymore. We could just use the DVD, but for speed, I would imagine going off the hard drive would be faster than going off a disk, like a, a DVD disk. That was redundant. <laughs> okay, I'll use English as the main language. Ah, uh, Barber Pole Aqua, the leopard, like Aurora wallpaper, the Chrome Apple logo, memories, memories, love it. Okay, we have a warning sign. Let's see what's up. You cannot install to enable installation on this volume. Okay, yep, that makes sense. What is even on this disc? Actually, I should figure that out first, now that I think about it. Considering that there's 458 gigabytes available out of 465, there's probably not much. Well, you know, also, I wasn't the previous owner of this computer. I don't know if I... I mean, people give me their computers with stuff on the hard drive all the time, but I... I usually feel a little weird about that. I usually erase their shit. Not all the time. Sometimes it's fun to explore. I mean, with their permission, of course. I'm a square, what can I say? Yeah, um... Okay, so that's fascinating. I, I could have just looked at this earlier. The disc inside this iMac G5 is Mac OS X install disc one, version 10.5.4. So my theory is whoever was using this G5 used it as like a deployment system, like to image computers, because there's an installer on this disk, but it's not bootable, so something happened. But yeah, that's the label right there. So, okay, what we need to do now that that's, that mystery is solved, let's go into disk <laughs> utility. And uh, disk utility's actually been okay today. It's been uh, been a good been a good boy. If disk utility's a boy, I really don't know the gender of this u this utility. Yeah. So we don't want GPT. We want to go to Apple Partition Map because it's a Power PC system. GPT is not for that. Mac OS Extended Journaled, and we'll just call it Mac OS X because I'm a noob and don't know that's a Roman numeral. Ha ha. All right, let's partition this sucker. 
Partition complete, Captain. All right. So now, back to here. Yep, it requires that. Install Mac OS X. Just to be extra safe, we'll let it do an additional erase, just to be super, super safe. Customize the install. So, language translations, we don't need that. We don't really need additional fonts, and we're not going to be printing. So let's take all that stuff off. Definitely throw X11 on there, that'd be fun. And install. Man, when was the last time I did a Leopard installation? Holy shnikes, it's been a while. I remember when I was just a youngin, I was so excited about Leopard because I just got back into the Mac realm, like right before Leopard came out. So I saw all of these new features. You know, I was on Tiger, but I saw all of these new features of Leopard coming soon. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want that so bad. But of course me being a puny little middle schooler, I couldn't really afford it. But now it's like, hey, all of Apple's software, except for the pro apps are free, which is nice. Ah, good times. Yeah, Leopard was cool. Okay, we're looking at an hour and 13 minutes. So just like before, this is the time where you go grab a cup of coffee or five cups of coffee, whatever will take an hour and 12 minutes to consume. Go on a jog while drinking coffee. Ooh, that'd be a challenge. Okay, it's only been about a half hour and it looks like we're almost done, but we're at the dreaded one minute remaining or about a minute remaining, we all know that when an installer says about a minute remaining, they really mean it's about 20 minutes to five business days. I'm sure we've all been there. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to bypass that and then switch back to the G5. But yep, it looks like it is bootable. It got set as the default. So it looks like that all worked. But I'm gonna shut this down because we don't really need it right now. Let's switch over. All right, let's shut down target disk mode on the G5 and reboot and pray that this thing works. Holy shit, guys, we got an apple. I snagged this thing for $35 on eBay because of a, probably because of the blinking question mark. So it was sold for less because it wasn't working. But, uh, well, first of all, I appreciate you, seller. I really do. But yeah, if that was all that it needed to start working, that was a steal. Do we got the intro video? Oh yeah. Do I have to acapella it again? Yeah, I'm gonna have to acapella this because it is a, you know, a song. Welcome! Yes, as it's said in multiple languages, so this computer is panlingual. Don't transfer my information, I don't have any information. Now I do connect to the internet via... Oh, uh, what? Hang on a second. Okay, how about this? How about we just say it doesn't connect to the internet right now? We have Wi-Fi, we can use Wi-Fi later. Do we need to fill this shit out, please? Can we just skip it? <gasps> Continue, yay, that's right. Leopard introduced the skip option for the stupid registration page. Really doesn't matter anymore. Crazy Ken, short name, Crazy Ken, password. The warranty for this product does not require you to register. That's great. You know, the warranty expired like 10,000 years ago. Anyway, we, uh, let's just go to Chicago. City of onions or something. Let's see, yep, the clock is almost accurate. It is 11.08. Don't forget to register. Don't worry, I won't. I guarantee, no, I don't. I don't guarantee it at all. Piss off. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Well, we got Leopard on a G5. My first G5 in my collection. All right, well, I guess we, we nailed that. That wasn't too much of a problem at all. I have a feeling in the future I will be using this for some speed tests and some installation sensations. We'll put other software on here and have fun with it. We have two gigabytes of RAM in here and a 1.8 gigahertz PowerPC G5. Pretty slick. Okay, so for fun, I kind of want to open this up because these computers were a lot easier to open than the later all-in-ones. And also per Greg's recommendation, I should check out the capacitors to make sure nothing is bulging. Also, I have a disc stuck in the disc drive, <laughs> which isn't very nice. 
Yeah, there's probably some communication issue with the optical drive. Actually, let's go to the system profiler and see if it's even detecting it. No burning device was found. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, the optical drive is screwed. Yeah, even the little eject menu is not finding anything. I'm not gonna be able to eject it with disk util and terminal because yeah, nothing's mounted. So yeah, that disk is just stuck in there until I manually can force it out. So that's okay. Let's still bust this baby open just for fun because I've never done it before and to check the capacitors. But yeah, software wise, bing, I'm calling that a win. Shut her down. And let's bust out, uh, I think you just need a Phillips head. It's pretty simple. These were like easy to open. So I've heard. Looks like we have just uh, three Phillips screws here. One, two, three. And there is a little bit of bulging with the case here. I just think it was maybe reapplied incorrectly or maybe something did get warped. But hey, for 30 bucks, can't really complain. Okay, this is probably gonna be too small of a screwdriver. Maybe not. It's a bit of a weak screwdriver, but you know, it was cheap and it's been with me like my whole life. <laughs> I've used this thing to open up so much shit. Okay, so it, yeah, I guess in typical Apple fashion, in a good way, the screws stay in even when you loosen them so you don't have them fall everywhere, which I guess is kind of nice. This guy here don't want to move. Looks like it was already stripped from a previous. Yeah, okay, we need something different. That other driver felt like it was just gonna bend and break. Let's try something a little thicker. There we go. And that's it, man. Shit, Apple made that really freaking easy. All right, here's quite obviously the G5 heatsink. Still uh, pretty toasty. RAM, hard disk, IO, optical drive. Man, this was a, just a clean design, in my opinion. I mean, that was pretty easy to open. Oh, heh, you know what? This would explain why we couldn't get on the Wi-Fi. There's no airport card. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess the first gen G5s did not have airport stock. You had to get that as an upgrade. That could be a potential future tech video log. That'd be a fun episode to do, get this thing wireless. For now, we can just hook it up through ethernet, really. Somewhere over there. Yeah, I'm not seeing any, you know, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm not seeing any like SMC bulging or like really serious capacitor leaks or anything. Like everything looks doesn't, doesn't really look too bad. The only trouble spot is with this optical drive. Okay, I actually just discovered something. I was pressing on the optical drive, specifically on the connector here to the board, and it was not down all the way. It's down now because I pressed it earlier, but it moved by probably about at least a millimeter. It did not feel like it was plugged in all the way. So yeah, maybe that fixed the optical drive issue. This tag is like about to rip off. Well, if that's all that was, gee, that'll be an easy fix too. Uh, this guy right here looks like he's bulging a little bit. Capacitors, man, they're the bane of frickin' every electronic device. Can't live with them, can't live without them, huh? Introducing the world's thinnest iMac. Just look at this beautiful precision enclosure. Like, it's so thin. It doesn't do much, though. It even has RAM upgrade instructions right there. Shielding, I.O., pretty sweet. Fun fact, there was a version of this iMac. I think it was for when they were doing the newer versions that, that had the ports running horizontally. And it was being worked on, but it had a, I believe it was a compact flash slot on it. That was a prototype decision. And that didn't make it into the final release, but Mike, who is on the Mac Yak show, has a G5 prototype with that reader on it, which is really awesome. And Jay from House of Moth did an article about it. So check that out. It's really cool because, you know, it's a prototype. It's like almost a one of a kind. I've never seen that before. It has a slot there. Yeah, pretty sweet. I don't have that, unfortunately. But hey, this is good enough, right? For $35, holy crap. All right, let's get her back together. All right, let's see if that did the trick with the optical drive. Let's go back into open firmware. Can't open the eject device. Wait a minute. I typed in eject CD, it's doing something. Boom, that's all it was. F yeah, that was a victory right there. The cable was just a little bit loose on the board. Wow, that was, 
Oh, man. Was that like when Graham Bell heard his first ring on the phone? Except maybe not as, not, this wasn't as exciting as that, but shit. Cool. We got an OS installed. It boots. We got the optical drive working again. I'm calling this one a huge win. And we got this thing for $35. Holy shit. Still a little bit jelly that Mike got the prototype one for, you know, like, what, 50 bucks? <laughs> but hey, luck of the draw, right? Cool, guys. Well, if you have any other ideas for this G5 that you want me to test out, I definitely want to maybe, uh, not definitely maybe, that doesn't make sense, but I'd like to possibly put in an airport card, probably install some other software and do some speed tests, but uh, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, but hey, thanks for tagging along. Catch the crazy and pass it on.